Hedge fund titan Barton Biggs has died at age 79. Good morning. This is the Markets Hub. I am Paul Vigna. Well, as you've probably heard the news by now, Barton Biggs, former Morgan Stanley strategist and one of the found, one of the early, early hedge fund investors, uh, founders, one of the first firms, has died over the weekend at age 79. Simon Constable, who has interviewed Mr. Biggs over several years, knows him fairly well, is here with us to talk about Bart, Barton Biggs. Uh, Simon, let's just let's just start off. Just give me your recollection of the man. You interviewed him several times. Yeah. Just tell me what your your take on him was. Well, I first say a lot of people found him somewhat crabby. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't find that. I found him charming and, and thoughtful, and he really pondered the questions. So I really I really liked his company. I mean, I didn't always see eye to eye with him on the way he looked at the world. Right. But he was very clear about what he thought, uh, and I, I really really enjoyed that. He was um, yeah very nice man. Right. And I guess that some of that is you know you get an impression of somebody you say they're they're, they're a crabby person. You know they're an honest person, right? I mean yeah. a lot of people you and I we interview a lot of people and you you get sort of canned responses. Yeah. You, you can you almost know what the answer is going to be before you ask the question. But it wasn't that way with him. No, it wasn't. He, he very much, and you can see this in the big interview, it's a 20 minute long live to tape, unedited video, and you can see him think, you can watch somebody think, and in particular it's him, as he tries really to give his best possible answer to the question rather than just throwing back something for the sake of filling sound. And right. that was actually really pleasing to me that he was really thinking about this. He was in many ways very troubled about what was going on with with the U.S. with the sort of the the, the sort of the spending and taxation situation? Um, he believed this was last summer, about a year ago. He he believed that we should definitely um, have the rich pay more taxes, which was interesting given that he was phenomenally wealthy yeah. himself. Um, but he didn't. I mean, it's funny. He didn't lead an extravagant life. I mean, he uh, he invited me to his home and we did the interview there, and it's a nice home. It's a, a, home, imagine, a, of course. a home of right. a, a, you know, a very nice home, and I was like, wow, this is great, but it wasn't extravagant or over the top or anything. It was uh, you know, a nice, nice place for yeah. him. And now, he, he had a long career on Wall Street, obviously, one of the first hedge fund, founded one of the first hedge funds, Fairfield Partners in 1965, mm. worked for Morgan Stanley, well-known name, wrote a yeah. lot of books. You know, what do you think set him apart from others on the street? Well, he kept at it. I mean, he was at Morgan Stanley for 30 years. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people do that 10, 10 years, and they've had enough, and they get out of it. Now, he, come, he came from, I talked to him about what he learned from his father mm -hmm. um, for, for, for a Father's Day piece, and, and he said, look, you know, my, my, I, when I was first interested in investing, and that wasn't his, he didn't study economics at college. He, his dad said, here's, here's, here's this book by Ben Graham, um, you need to, and security analysis Huge by, by, Huge and book, by him and Dodd. And he said, read it. And he said, great, you've read it. Um, now read it again and underline the important bits. So, I mean, his dad was very much sort of, you know, pushed back on him to actually learn it. And I think he remained that sort of student of markets mm -hmm. and not just sort of taking gut reactions, but really thinking about the way they reacted. And in his book, um, War, Wealth and Wisdom, um, or some combination of those words, maybe I got the order mm -hmm. wrong, but he really talks about how to, and, and writes about how, how to sort of look at markets and how markets can often be ahead of the reality. So he noted that the market started to rally even before the Second World War was over. Um, on anticipation that it would be one. What do you think, and it might be that actually, what do you think will be his lasting legacy? What do I think will be, I, I, think, I think it will be his sort of very analytical approach to things. Um, he wasn't a sort of a, 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 a raider type and he wasn't mm -hmm. someone, I'm like, George Soros, who he knows, sort of became to fame, sort of you know, by shorting the pound, the st right. sterling, and made a ton of money. That wasn't see, that didn't seem to me to be his style. His style was okay. Let's see what um, you know what the fundamentals are, and let's invest based on those, based on big secular trends, yeah. rather than trying to destroy a currency just because you know whatever. Just because you can. Just because right. you can, which seemed to be all right. So sort of a, a values, fundamentals, pragmatism. Yeah, and he seemed right. to be a man of deep values too. Yeah. Simon Constable, thank you very much for your Thank time. You. My pleasure. We will be back in a moment.